I've been here for farm for about 40 years since I was 18 essentially. My great great uncle bought this farm in 1881 and my grandfather moved out here with my dad in 1950. As a young teenager my dad had me disc soybean stubble and then my grandpa went and plowed it, mobile bore plowed it. Well the following spring the soil dried out and the winds would be blowing and it would be a dust storm you couldn't see half a mile. In fact the end of May, even around here, there was some strong winds, 30 to 40 mile an hour winds, and the soil was blowing. But uh, it just reminded me how important it is to take care of it. The Boone River watershed is 85% agriculture, so it dominates the environment. Uh, farmers here want to be good stewards. They want to do the right thing. So the partnerships have come together with resources to help farmers become better stewards, answer questions, uh, improve their conservation practices, and improve water quality. The Nature Conservancy started working in the Boone River watershed in about 2004 and started working with private landowners and farmers on installing conservation practices. And we found that at the same time, we need to be worrying about both the environment but also their bottom line. We encourage different incentives for the farmers and these incentives help prevent nitrogen from entering the streams and going down the Mississippi River. Two years ago, we had a really wet spring. We got like six inches of rain and we had a lot of washing. And after that, I got to thinking, boy, we got to try to do something different. What we do with farmers is try to uh, maximize results and minimize loss. So that loss might be minimizing loss on soil erosion, minimize loss on, on nutrients. So some of the major threats are just weather-based, practice-based, making sure the right practices are on the landscape in the right locations, and educating farmers on, on how those practices work and behave and perform. Last year, I decided to go with strip till on all my corn ground and then I tried it on some bean ground and then I did some conventional tillage on my bean ground and then I run a comparison this year and see what my yields are. So far my strip till looks the best. Strip tillage, what I'm doing is tilling about one third of the area. I take a knife and go every 30 inches and till about six to eight inches wide and about six to eight inches deep and that will be my planting uh, area for the next, the next spring. This is last year's corn crop. There's really not much left of it. I harvested it last October, but you can see there's, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just getting smaller and smaller and decomposing down into the soil below it. I mean, the soil is moist and it's crumbly. And I mean, if you can just imagine raindrops hitting this, it just, the raindrops just bounce off. But when a raindrop hits a, a soil particle, it picks up soil particles and when the water, if the water flows across the surface then it takes the soil particles with it and along those soil particles are nutrients and those nutrients is what get in the streams. And if we can keep nitrogen from entering the water going down to Des Moines where they get their drinking water out of the river and then they have to treat it so much when there's nitrogen in it and then when it gets down to the Gulf of Mexico that it causes a dead zone. Plus if they can control that nitrogen the farmer should make more money because they're keeping it on the field for the crop and not letting it get in the stream and wash away. There's a lot of uh, research out there and there's a lot of farmers in other parts of the country doing these practices and uh, with good results. Uh, benefits to the soil and benefits to the crop and, uh, and maintaining the yields that they would have gotten with conventional tillage. Strip tillage, I think, is one of the tools that we can use to protect the soil and the cover crop just enhances that protection. This spring, there's 300 acres here that greened up. Everything around me was just uh, soybean stubble and corn stalks and black dirt, basically, but my farm was coming to life. There's always some farmers that are willing to try these practices, and the other farmers say they're watching them, and if they can make a go of it, then they're gonna get more interested, because they farm like this for quite a few years. It's working. They don't wanna change all of a sudden, but when they see each other's, or neighbors doing it, they're willing to change. Our approach is to be kind of have a locally led effort. So we want to work with those farmers and those producers and landowners that live and work in this watershed. Farmers deal with farmers and they have more trust with each other and uh, and I'm, <laughs> I'm not a salesman, I'm just here to show what we're doing and, uh, and, 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 and we're doing it and it works.